Marin, I wanted to ask you first of all about you and the RPO because there was a previous occasion, I think, but it was quite a long time ago. Yes, I, I think uh, it's it's been many years. Uh, I remember our last concert, our first and last concert very well, which was uh, also Shostakovich, Shostakovich Fifth Symphony. It was wonderful, but it's been many years and uh, I anticipate it could be a little bit like, you know, catching up with an old friend that you haven't seen for many years, but of course the orchestra is probably transformed by now with m players that move on or, or change positions and younger musicians coming in. So uh, I, I can't wait to see what it's like. Mm. You know, my, uh, my feeling about the RPO is just admiration for all that they do. They're an extraordinarily versatile orchestra and uh, even though I haven't personally conducted them, I see them, you know, doing all kinds of things from recordings to uh, all kinds of genres of music and performances and touring and uh, certainly in the United States they're one of the most popular touring orchestras so I can't wait to see them again. And their longevity is testament to all of that. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I know how hard British musicians work and RPO is up there for sure. And when you go in for that first meeting and that first rehearsal which is with is ostensibly a new orchestra um, do you have a particular approach in those circumstances to, to bringing everybody on board and on side? You know, I really am, my, mo my motivation is always to represent the composer. So it, it's pretty simple approach, which is, you know, we have this amazing opportunity to play this great piece, particularly this Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 7, and how can we be unified in bringing it to life and bringing the excitement to it and hopefully the people that attend the concert can feel almost as though they were at the premiere. You know, how can we capture that together? So that's my approach. And what about working with, as you have so many times, different distinguished soloists? I mean, how much time, for example, do you have in advance of an actual performance in those circumstances? Well, you know, it of course depends on the rehearsal time, but it's surprisingly little time. One needs to forge a relationship uh, very quickly. So, um, I mean, it's just like meeting new, I, fortunately I like people very much, and, and I know Renault, um, we've worked together before, so we have a history, so we'll be able to pick up where we left off. Um, but, you know, you generally I get together with the solos before the rehearsal, and then we have one or two rehearsals together, So. It's not a huge growth time, but uh, some magical things can happen and, and we try to make them happen in a very short period of time. And in this case, of course, as you say, Renaud Capuçon is performing the Mendelssohn. Yes, and he's wonderful. I haven't done Mendelssohn with him before, but the last time we played together was in Sao Paulo and uh, we did uh, Corn Gold Concerto. It was terrific. What about the venue? Here we are sitting in the South Bank Centre. What does this venue mean to you? Well, South Bank Center is a very special place for me. I've had a long, uh, long relationship and culminating now with uh, being artist in residence for a few years. And I've, I think I've grown along with the institution here. You know, I've watched it um, really blossom and develop. And for me, it's very special because we share similar philosophies. I, I believe that classical music should be accessible to everyone and should be as inclusive and broad as possible. And that seems to be really the, I'd say the DNA, the mission of South Bank Center. So, so many projects I do seem to mesh perfectly with their goals. And uh, I found this, this has been a, a relationship that's grown into a true, a true marriage over the years. Just as a final thought, people still tend to talk of you and your career and then put it in the context of the comparative rarity still of prominent female conductors. Where do we stand on that today, do you think? You know, I'm, I'm hopeful with the new appointments I see around and the success of many of my colleagues and, and the incredible talent that they bring to the podium. I'm hopeful that uh, we'll see a shift in the landscape, but so far, I don't see a seismic shift, maybe a little bit of erosion here and there, but uh, it would be nice to have a, some kind of eruption. Mm. So those making the decisions need a little bit more of a prod, a push, than perhaps they've had thus far. Oh, you said it, not 
not me. <laughs> Mary, thank you very much. My pleasure.